So following on from Sir Wynne Williams' uh, statement that he is going to call approximately 68 witnesses into phases five and six of the Post Office Horizon IT inquiry, which are due to start on the 9th of April 2024, I thought it would be useful to have a look at the names of witnesses to see who we are expecting. Now, we've not got a running order or dates that they're going to be called yet. That's not been determined and the witnesses that we're going to go through are just in alphabetical order so it's not implying any kind of chronology in which they appear during phase five, phase five sorry and six which will conclude on the 31st of july 2024 so uh one of the things the inquiry i've said is phases five and six witnesses will include post office and royal mail group board members post office senior management post office in-house and external lawyers Fujitsu employees and senior executives, politicians and senior civil servants, campaigners and independent reviewers. So quite a lot of people taking part. And the list of witnesses in alphabetical order by surname. So we're going to have Brian Altman, KC, who is a leading criminal barrister in the UK. So Brian Altman, KC, advised the post office on the Horizon scandal from 2013 to 2021. Uh, we've got Lord James Arbuthnot of Edrum, who was MP for North East Hampshire and was contacted by the sub-postmasters, believe he met Joe Hamilton initially. And in the drama, Mr Bates first the post office, we saw her with a mum at that meeting um, where he took concerns relating to Horizon and what the sub-postmasters were saying to Parliament and helped organise getting things in terms of um, the second site report and the initial uh, mediation schemes underway. Chris Ojard, who joined the post office in 2013 um, as a new interim general counsel and has been had responsibility for both legal function and internal audit there. Alan Bates needs no introduction. We saw him so the main character, sub-postmaster, who first raised issues with Horizon in 2000 and formed the Justice for Sub-Postmasters Alliance group that eventually won the court case in 2019 and has been pivotal in exposing the scandal. Tom Beezer, who's a partner in the commercial disputes team and has had involvement in the post office um, with regards to cases such as the Lee Castleton case. Patrick Burke, who is currently the Deputy Corporate Services Director at the post office. Harry Bowyer at Cartwright King, um, one of the legal firms involved with the post office. Sir Vince Cable, a politician, former MP and a former leader of the Liberal Democrats, who was part of the coalition government, uh, the Conservative-led coalition government in 2010 to 2015, where he served as the business secretary. Richard Callard, a senior civil servant and an executive director at the UK Government Investments, which is UKGI. Mark Lister davies that looks like most recently he's been involved with the charity Booper but has previously had involvement with the post office. Alistair Cameron, who is the chief financial officer of the post office. Richard Christou, who is credited with saving ICL, the predecessor to Fujitsu that was taken over, and who said to us acted the CEO of Fujitsu from 2000 for a short time. Greg Clark MP, the current Conservative MP for Tunbridge Wells, who's held several ministerial positions. Simon Clark, who worked for Cartwright King and wrote advice relating to the post office scandal in 2013. Alan Cook, an ex post office director who is said to have overseen the prosecution of 160 postmasters. He did claim earlier last month that he'll never forgive himself for what happened at the post office and that there were no concerns raised with the Fujitsu Horizon software to him. Tom Cooper, a director at UK Government Investments Limited. Belinda Crow, who I believe had some involvement around the time of the second site report then that was mentioned in the drama. Susan Christian, who's the former general counsel at the post office. Adam Crozier, currently chairperson of the BT Group. He's held several high-profile positions, including with the uh, Football Association, ITV, PLC, 
and he was the CEO of the Royal Mail during the post office scandal, whilst the post office was still part of the Royal Mail group. Sir Edward Davy MP, current leader of the Liberal Democrats, who was part of the coalition government, Conservative led from 2010 to 2015, who initially refused to meet um, Alan Bates, but then met him later on that year to discuss the concerns and campaign that they had with regards to the post office scandal, and has obviously been widely criticised for his involvement or lack thereof in helping to expose and resolve the post office scandal. Christopher Day, who was the Chief Financial Officer at the Post Office between 2011 and 2015. Anthony Degar Robinson KC, who was a barrister and was a QC at the time for the Post Office. Andrew Dunks, or Andy Dunks, who works at Fujitsu and has been an Information Technology Security Analyst. Martin Edwards, a Managing Director of the Identity Services Division at the Post Office. Hugh Flemington, a lawyer for the Post Office. Ben Foe, General Counsel for the Post Office. Lord Anthony Grabener, KC, who is a barrister involved in the Post Office scandal. Dame Moya Green, who until 2018 was the Chief Executive Officer of the Royal Mail. Ian Henderson, who is a forensic computing expert, witness and electronic disclosure specialist from the Second Sight Forensic Accountants Organisation that produced their report in 2013, I want to say. Sir Michael Hodgkinson, who was the non-executive chairman of the post office, having previously held senior roles at BAA. Sir Anthony Hooper, who's a former Court of Appeal judge and was chairman of the Post Office's much maligned mediation scheme where we saw in the drama Mr Bates versus the Post Office actually sub postmasters walked out of because they didn't feel that they were getting due process. Rod Ismay, who was the former head of product and branch accounting at the Post Office who had produced a much maligned report in August 2010 called the Ismay Report into the Horizon IT System. Margot James, a former MP for Stourbridge, who has been accused of not helping uh, affected sub-postmasters during the post office scandal, where she herself has admitted over the past few years that she probably didn't do enough to help those affected. Gareth Jenkins, who's the former chief architect at Fujitsu. Tony Kearns, Senior Deputy General Secretary at the Communication and Workers Union, who's been in his current post since 2001. Alan Layton, a former non-executive chairman of the Royal Mail. Matthew Lenton, Fujitsu employee who worked on the post office account team as a document manager. Kay Linnell, a forensic accounting specialist who played an integral role in the Justice for Sub Postmasters Alliance case against the post office's Horizon computer system. John Longman, a post office investigator. Sir Stephen Lovegrove, who has most recently been a national security advisor and a senior civil servant, former permanent secretary in the Department for Energy and Climate Change in 2016. Alwyn Lyons, the company secretary at the post office. Baroness Lucy Neville Rolfe, who is a former MP. I believe, and has been uh, Minister of State since the 20th of September 2022. She joined the House of Lords as a Conservative peer in October 2013. Jane McLeod, Post Office General Counsel. Kevin McCall, currently a Senior Independent Non-Executive Director at the Post Office. Neil McCausland, who was appointed a Senior Independent Director at the Post Office in 2015. Pat McFadden, who's currently Labour's Shadow Chancellor of the Duchy of Lancaster. He was Minister for Postal Affairs from 2007 to 2010 in the last Labour government. David Miller, who's the former Horizon Programme Director at the Post Office. David Mills, a former Chief Executive of the Post Office from the early 2000s. Patrick O'Sullivan, a Scottish sub-postmaster. Tim Parker, who's a businessman with a varied career, who has previously been the Chairman of the Post Office. Among his other appointments have been to the National Trust. Her Majesty's Court and Tribunal Service, Kenwood, Clark Shoes, Quick Fit, the AA and Samsonite, among others. Andrew Parsons, a Womble Bond partner who defended the post office in the group litigation brought in 2019 by the 555 sub-postmasters. Alice Perkins, a former chairman of the post office when she was appointed in July 2011. 
Mark Russell, a senior figure throughout the post office scandal from the 2010s, I believe. Leslie Sewell, who previously had a career at the failed bank Northern Rock that collapsed during the global financial crisis of 2008, joined the post office in April 2010 as a Chief Information Officer, CIO. Jan Elsing, who's appeared before the inquiry before, who was Head of Criminal Law, we think. Uh, I don't think he was too sure on his title when he last appeared in the inquiry. Maybe that's been cleared up now. David Smith, the former Chief Financial Accountant at the Post Office. Martin Smith from legal firm Cartwright King. Susanna Story, who's current Permanent Secretary in the Department for Culture, Media and Sport, who's previously sat on the board of the Post Office as a non-executive director as the government representative. Robert Swannell, who's the Chairman of the UK Government Investments Limited. Joe Swinson, former leader of the Liberal Democrats, who lost her seat in 2019. Or was it 2017? It was certainly one of them. Uh, But she was part of the coalition government, Conservative-led from 2010 to 2015, during which time she served as Postal Minister from 2012 to 2015. Duncan Tate, who was the Chief Executive of Fujitsu UK between 2011 and 2014. George Thompson, who was the General Secretary of the National Federation of Sub-Postmasters. Kelly Tolhurst, who currently represents Rochester and Strew. She is a politician and a former Minister for Postal Affairs in government. Angela van der Bogaert, who is a businesswoman uh, who was fairly central in the drama Mr. Bates versus the Post Office due to her position as essentially the right-hand woman to former CEO Paula Venels, who is the next in the list, who was CEO of the Post Office from 2012 to 2019, also depicted in the drama. Paula Venels was honoured for her services to the post office after stepping down in 2019 with the CBE, which she agreed to hand back after our petition reached over 1.2 million people, forcing her to take action. Ron Warmington, who is the managing director of Second Sight, who produced the independent report into uh, the Horizon IT system and the failings of it at the post office, published in 2013. He is a forensic accountant and fraud investigator by trade. Roderick Williams, who's head of legal at Post Office. And Andrew Wynn, finally, who was the former Post Office relationship manager. So that's it. That's all 68 names we've currently got for phases five and six of the Post Office Horizon IT inquiry with a brief introduction. Uh, Certainly a very interesting list of people who in a number of cases have had extensive involvement uh, with the relevant organisations throughout the post office scandal, and who certainly held senior positions not only in the post office, but in a number of cases in several other businesses, uh, the civil service and government organisations as well. So it will be, will be certainly interesting to hear what they say when phases five and six commence on the 9th of April.